everybody. All right. So, let me check pictures for you. Hey, everybody. All right. So, uh, Travis has a ASA BFA tournament um, on Gunnersville next week. So we're going to do some pre-fishing. Um, and Gunnersville, a lot of you hadn't fished it, is covered in millful grass, eel grass, like the top of the water is covered in eel grass, but there's millful everywhere. Um, it's really not one of my favorite places to fish. Some people absolutely love it, and God bless them. So, but there's pockets in between the grass, uh, and a lot of times those bass are swimming in between that grass and those pockets, or they're standing just sitting there staging, waiting for a bait fish or something to eat, come through those little pockets so they can see it, and bam, hit it. Uh, so, in saying that, this is one of the main things that I like to use. I like to use swim baits uh, and flukes and crawls and worms and everything, but I try to put them either on just weightless or put them on like a fluke hook, which is especially a, like a worm hook with a little piece of weight right here that's smooth. And the reason you do that is you can go right here, just like you would hook it up like for a Texas rig. And you go through, but here's the point. See the weight, the weight has to go through there too. So yeah, it'd be real easy, kind of smoosh it up in that soft plastic and pull it through right there. So, and a lot of times I'll pinch off the head just to make more of a blunt surface so it has a bigger area to go through so it doesn't tear it as easy. Now, this is one thing. You know it needs to be sitting like this, straight. So, sometimes you gotta like squish up the swim bait because I'm using a smaller one. And then, just like that. And then I'll tuck the edge of the hook up underneath the back of that swim bait just enough to keep it so it's weedless. You know, you can pull it through there and not have to worry about getting caught on weeds. And, uh, but it's gonna break loose real quick, just like that. One of the biggest problems you run into is if you get a lot of bites or if you get hung a lot, you know, just on whatever, you know, that place will kind of mess up and you'll have to do it again or change baits. But that's what you want. You want it straight. You want it looking more natural. And that thing's gonna sink and it's gonna wobble. And uh, we pretty much just try to make it look like a dying shad or just a, a dart and shad and then it drops, and dart and shad and it drops. Um, that's one of my favorite baits to use there because A, uh, it's weedless and there's a ton of weeds in Gunnersville. A lot. Uh, so, saying it, you know, I'm not using, which, you know, we can use braid. I'm not against braid. Uh, probably should be using it for that. I'm just a huge fan of mono. mono. Uh, it casts better for me, and I just, if I ever have a backlash, and it's a lot easier to get out with mono, and I have a lot of backlashes because I'm not professional. All right. Numero uno bait in Gunnersville that I know of is the frog. And basically, you just, you throw it out, you find grass, that's not a hard thing to do. You go anywhere toward a bank, anything less than pretty much 10 foot of water has grass in it. And uh, you just kind of jerk this around. If you hit a, a clean spot in the grass, you just kind of let it dangle for a minute and you might want to just twitch it just a little bit and then just move to the next little spot. There's huge pods of grass as you'll see tomorrow. And you gotta let them have it for a minute. 
and top water fishing is like a 50-50. Uh, thick bass will grab it, but because it's a top water bait and it's soft, those hooks have to be compressed. So sometimes you set that hook, it either pulls straight out of their mouth, it's turned sideways, it don't get a good hook set, or, you know, right as you set that hook, that bass is actually opening up its mouth, either A, to swallow it more, or to just feel like, this don't taste right. And then you, you miss the bite. Um, another bait, she gets caught up in the grass a lot, but if you can find huge holes in the grass, and uh, especially around ledges and stuff that I found, and I say ledges, I didn't know what a ledge was in Guntersville till first tournament. And uh, but basically, they've got grass right up to the edge of the channel. It's like a sheer bluff. And uh, those bass hang out right there. So you go with your electronics, you try either, you know, find a bass that's down there suspended or you know, accidentally shot out for a minute and you kind of see him, but even just covering a lot of terrain and channel and, um, but this right here moves a lot of water. It gets their attention. Uh, this right here is the original chatterbait. Uh, I think it's a three eighths ounce. I put uh, a big grub on there. It's sort of crawl color. And this right here is like a purple green skirt. And basically, you can swim it like a swim jig. You can use a spinner bait. You can use a jig. But it's gonna move a lot of water because of that right there. And it's basically like you pull it, you get their attention. It's dropping. They eat it, and you set the hook. Hopefully, this is something pretty cool. And we've had a lot of opportunities to catch fish. And uh, for some odd reason, we were not doing very good. And this is something I learned actually in Canada. Uh, we was fishing on a lake. And we kept missing these pike. And, uh, you know, they were just tearing our baits up. That we wouldn't get in the fish in the boat. And it does make them sink a little bit. But it moves a little water. It looks natural. But it's these floating little fish. Same thing as a frog, really but I added the trailer hook to it. But you always wanna make sure that your trailer hook is pointed up because the weight's on the bottom of this fish. So when you throw it out there, the fish is gonna lay like this and it'll sink down. So as long as you're moving it pretty consistently, that trailer hook's gonna stay up just like that. So it's the same scenario as a buzz bait, anything else you put a trailer hook on, but it does make it sink faster. So you gotta work it a little bit faster or else you're gonna get hung up in some junk. But we've had a lot of luck with that. And uh, you know, whenever you're in Gunnersville and you're trying to fish top water slash make them think they're seeing something that's vulnerable, you know, for food, that there is a good bait to use. I really like that. Um, and we've used it on several other things too. It even works on frogs like that. But the fish, cause it's sitting there on top of the water and you're pulling it and it's flopping around. You got that extra hook and because it's so shallow because it's fish instead of a frog, you got an extra chance of making a hook set. So we're gonna try it tomorrow and we'll let you know how it works out. Thanks for watching.